What's going on guys, McGinley Customs here, and welcome to episode 2 of the, I don't even know what I've called it yet to be honest, I'm just going to call it the Z-Modeler Master Guide, I guess you could say that. So welcome to episode 2 of the Z-Modeler Master Guide I guess. This video is going to be very very short, very very simple as well, it's simply going to be just creating a workspace for your vehicles and your projects and all of that malarkey. Now this is common sense I guess if you could say, but you would be surprised how many people just do not make workspaces for their stuff. It is a very common thing to do a workspace in development, see so you see things like Java, pro uh, Java projects, you have workspaces there where you have organisation. Now I feel personally that organisation when you're modelling is quite important, it really de-stresses things and it really just makes things much faster and simpler. I know I probably shouldn't have to do a tutorial on this, but you know what, I feel like I should just do it anyway, just to let you guys know, as it is part of a series, and I'm kind of teaching you the way I do it as well. Now, there will be a bonus video coming out after this video. It will be the same day, so you're going to be seeing this after this video. It's going to be where to find parts for your vehicles. That's where I'm going to be just showing the most commonly used websites and where you can get the parts from on them websites. So this video is going to be a real short one, a really, really short one. So the first thing I recommend you do, personally, I have a separate drive for my work. As you can see here, I've got a work drive. Oh, that's just where I do all my, my modeling stuff. That's where I do all my custom projects for my customers and all of that. Now, if you don't have a separate drive, but you have one drive with a lot of free space, I recommend making a partition on your drive so you can just dedicate that partition to, to Zmodeler basically and just have your space where you can just get on with it. Now, one layout that I recommend you do when you're making your workspace is that you just have the, 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 the root folder, you call it, and it can just be the name of the project. For example, in this series, I'm going to be making a 2016 Explorer. So I'd make a, de a, a file on my desktop called 2016 Explorer. And inside of there, I would make a file called base. I'd make a file called assets. I'd make a file called textures. Now what I usually do is I take all of the assets and inside of the assets file I just throw the textures from the assets file inside of the textures file. I throw the base of the vehicle, say example I had a 2016 FPIU, I would put the 2016 FPIU base files in the base file here. And say the assets, assets such as RAM bars, uh, light bars, it would all go in the assets file. Now I really would recommend if you want to continuously do modeling vehicles that you make a development workspace. For example, you can have, have a drive where you have your bases stored, you have your light bars stored, etc, etc. Now that is if I recommend doing that if you're actually going to continue doing development. It makes it much easier if you know where your stuff is straight away as soon as you start making the vehicle. And it just speeds up the process a lot more and it doesn't make you waste your time going on that as PDF file. Now that's really it for this video. Now, on the same day, within 10 minutes of I've released this video, there'll be another video coming out on where to find vehicle parts. So yeah, guys, stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.